ever get that feeling, you know, when you go back to like where you grew up and it's like, bam, yeah. memories just hit you. Like a wave. Yeah, exactly. A tidal wave of memories. That's kind of what we're diving into today, but like on a whole other level, we're, we're talking French philosopher, Michel Serre, and how he grapples with huge changes. But he does it all through the lens of his childhood home, which is fascinating. It's a powerful concept. Right. And we're exploring this through his book, Eddie Chats. Which, by the way... That title alone is a whole conversation starter. Oh, tell me about it. Addy Chats. It's Occitan. Mm -hmm. Basically the language that's sadly fading away where he grew up in France. And it means farewell. Yeah. And you really feel that sense of farewell right from the start. It's like he's saying goodbye to a world that's slipping away. And that's what makes how he describes his childhood so poignant, I think. Like he talks about this really hard work. Dredging sand, breaking rocks, you know, the real nitty gritty of rural life. The backbreaking reality of it. Exactly. Mm. But there's this beauty, too, in how he describes it. Like, even the roar of a machine becomes a kind of music to him. It's like he finds poetry in the unexpected. Totally. It challenges us to rethink what we consider beautiful or meaningful. What about you? Ever find yourself drawn to sounds you wouldn't usually call beautiful? All the time, actually. Like the hum of a city at night, that's never left me. It reminds me of possibility. I love that. And I think that's what Sarah's is getting at, how these everyday experiences, even the harsh ones, shape how we see the world. And he's very aware that his perspective is, well, changing. Oh, yeah. He even goes so far as to call himself a migrant, which is wild because he hasn't even moved that far from where he grew up. Right. But it's that feeling of disconnect, you know, like he doesn't quite belong to the world he came from anymore. It's like he's a stranger in his own land. And language plays a huge part in that. Because as we mentioned, the Occitan language is vanishing. It's heartbreaking in a way. He has this whole thing about the word agutal. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'll be honest. I had to look it up. Me too. Turns out it's a type of tool they used on boats, specifically for scooping. But what's crazy is that nobody he knows even uses that word anymore. It's like it's just gone. And for him, it's not just a word. It represents something much bigger. Right. This whole idea of linguistic extinction. Like when a language dies, we lose so much more than just words. It's a whole way of seeing and understanding the world that disappears. Which really makes you think, is there an agutal in all of our lives? Something we cherish that's fading away and taking a piece of us with it. And it's not just about nostalgia, right? Sarah's isn't just like wistful for the good old days. He actually sees real value in those fading ways of life, even if they seem, well, kind of useless in the face of all this new tech. Exactly. He uses this amazing example, rugby. He talks about it as this whole other form of knowledge, almost like a secret society. Okay, that's fascinating. Most of us think of rugby as, you know, just a sport. But for Sayers, it's more like a cultural code. Precisely. He argues that just knowing the rules doesn't make you understand rugby. It's the shared experience, the values, the unspoken language passed down through generations. Which is so interesting because he contrasts that with academics who spend their lives studying, you know, far off cultures, but miss the depth right under their noses. It's like he's saying, hey, there's this whole universe of knowledge in your own backyard if you just open your eyes. And I think that's a message that resonates even more strongly today. We're bombarded with information from all over the world. But how often do we stop to truly understand the complexities of our own communities, our own histories? It's that classic thing of not seeing the forest for the trees, only on a way bigger level. In Sayers, he finds those hidden depths everywhere, even in the face of nature's power. Like his descriptions of the Garonne River flooding, they're almost mythical. He talks about the water swallowing everything, turning the world into this silent, terrifying expanse. What's striking is how he finds a strange beauty in that destruction. It's almost like those floods mirror the changes he sees happening in society. Oh, I see what you mean. The floods wash away the old, making way for the new. It's this powerful cycle of creation and destruction that both terrifies and inspires him. And this brings us to another important aspect of Sarah's work, his writing itself. For him, writing isn't just a profession. It's a way to grapple with these immense changes, to preserve the memory of a world on the verge of disappearing. So in a way, his writing becomes its own act of defiance against this tide of change. It's how he holds on to what's fading away. Exactly. He even talks about finding solace in writing. It's like by putting these words on the page, he's building a bridge between his past and present, between the world he knew and the one he's struggling to understand. It reminds me of that idea that language has the power to create worlds. And in Sarah's case, it also seems to be about preserving them. 
Absolutely. He's creating a space where the agutal can still exist, where the sounds of his childhood, the roar of machinery, the silence of the flooded plains can still resonate. And maybe that's what we're all trying to do in our own way, mm. right? Hold on to those fading pieces of ourselves, those memories, those experiences that make us who we are. It's about recognizing that those seemingly useless pieces of knowledge, those agutals in our lives, often hold more significance than we realize. They're the threads that connect us to our past, to our communities, to the world around us. It makes you think about what we risk losing when those threads are broken. Mm. It's like you were saying earlier about Sarah. It's like how he calls himself a migrant, even though he hasn't really, you know, left home. Right. It's like he's lost something, even if it's not like a, a physical place. You so know, exactly. Like... And it's by holding on to those pieces, you know, those fading pieces of language, those memories of a mm -hmm. world that's changing. It's like he's honoring that sense of loss. It's a way of acknowledging that even if we embrace progress, a part of us will always be tied to where we come from. It's like he's saying, OK, world, mm -hmm. you can change. But I'm going to keep these memories alive. Mm. And through his writing, he's sharing that with us, that act of remembrance. And it makes me think about, you know, how important those acts of remembrance are, especially now. I mean, everything feels so temporary, you know, so fleeting. When was the last time you just like stopped and actually thought about those things, the things that shaped you, the words, the experiences? That's such a good point, because it's so easy to get caught up in the rush of it all, the new that we forget to, like, look back, mm. you know, to appreciate what grounds us, those foundations. And for Sarah's going back to those experiences, those agutals, it wasn't about clinging to the past. It was about understanding how it makes us who we are. Exactly. It's about recognizing that those seemingly insignificant details, those memories, those words, they all make up who we are individually and collectively, our stories. So if we want to understand who we are, where we're going, we need to understand where we came from. We need to actually listen to the whispers of the past, even while everything's shouting about the future. It's about finding that balance between, like you said, progress and preservation, honoring what was, but embracing the new, too. And maybe, just maybe, if we can hold on to those pieces of ourselves, those things that seem, I don't know, useless at times, maybe that's how we build a better future. One that doesn't erase the past, but learns from it. A future where we can say, oh, you know, maybe a little sadness, but hope, too. Adi chats. Farewell, but not forgotten. A D chats to the agutals in our lives. And to you, dear listener, we ask, what are your agutals? What? What's fading from your world? Share your thoughts with us on social media. Use hashtag myagutal. This has been The Deep Dive.